स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ शिवगिरी श्री नारायण सीनियर सेकेंडरी स्कूल आज के टू सेलिब्रेट नेशनल मैथ डे स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ क्लास इलेवन है It was a terrible day for me. You know, in school they were celebrating Ramanujan's birthday, so because of that there was a quiz competition, and you know they were constantly asking me questions about Ramanujan. I couldn't answer a single question, and you know after the competition everyone was making fun of me. Who was this Ramanujan sister? Can you please tell me? You know Ramanujan was a great mathematician. It's no big deal learning about him. Come with me. I'll tell you everything about him. Who was Sri Nivasa Ramanujan? Did he really know about infinity? Let's check it out. Ramanujan, the fire which caused spontaneous outbreak in the history of mathematics. He was a great mathematician born on the year 1887 on 22nd of December. At the age of 22, he married Janaki Ammal when she was 10 years old. Synopsis of Elementary Results in Pure and Applied Mathematics was the book that influenced Ramanujan to create his own proofs and theories in mathematics. Ramanujan's Pi Formula. At first, he wrote down 17 ways to find pi, but this was a very large series. So, he discovered a new series which could find pi much more easily this series gets you to the value of pi after the first term and adds eight correct digits per term he failed in other subjects so lost his scholarship from madras university later on he received a scholarship from both trinity and cambridge he started writing letters to cambridge professors The first two letters went unnoticed but the third letter was answered by G H Hardy the person who helped him to secure a scholarship let's know more about them from Gauri The laws of nature are nothing but the mathematical thoughts of god Srinivas Ramanuja a world renowned mathematician also known as the man who knew infinity His talent and efficiency was recognized by G H Hardy a British mathematician who arranged for him to be a student at Cambridge University Hardy was his friend and mentor for many years both of them collaborated on many mathematical problems a famous anecdote about Ramanujan during this time relates to when Hardy arrived at his house in a cab number 1729 Hardy claimed to this number to be uninteresting But Ramanujan said, "No, it is a very interesting number. It is the only number which can be represented in two forms as the cubes of two numbers. This number was later known as the Hardy-Ramanujan number, and such numbers are referred to as taxigram numbers." Ramanujan proved over three thousand theorems, identities, and equations. He conducted major investigation on polar form, modular form, divergent series, hypergeometric series, and prime number theory. He also figured out various methods for the calculation of the value of pi which are used by modern computers to compute the value of pi to ever increasing accuracy levels. Eventually though the frustrated Ramanuja spiraled into depression and illness and even attempted suicide once. After a period in a sanatorium and a brief visit to his family, he passed away in 1922 at the tragically young age of 32. Some of his original and highly unconventional researches such as Ramanuja prime and Ramanuja theta function have inspired amounts of other research and have applications in various fields. We need more creative brains like Ramanuja in the present world. Such brains should be molded in classrooms. No doubt the seeds of Ramanuja's garden have been blown away and is now growing all over the world. Thank you. tricky max puzzle using these six crayons can you make four triangles solution using three crayons we can make the digit 4 and using the balance three crayons we can make the triangle find me i am a number i am not an odd number i am higher than 90 I am not higher than hundred. If you subtract me from hundred, you get nothing. Solution: 
let consider the number b x we know x is greater than 90 and x is less than 100 if you subtract x from 100 you get zero so the answer is 100 solve the puzzle if you are a genius solution in a we have 1 plus 3 is equal to 4 and 2 into 4 is equal to 8 which we have it as a middle number uh, come into c 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 and 4 into 5 is equal to 20 uh, which is the middle number and in d 3 plus 6 is equal to 9 and 9 multiplied with 2 gives 18 which is a middle number and come into b uh, we can assume the number to be x and by solving the required equation we get the number as 11 therefore we get x is equal to 11 this is a video about how to multiply two two digit numbers in a easy way for that take two two digit numbers such as 32 and 24 one for multiplication for the product first we should take the first digit of each number and multiply them the 3 into 2 is equal to 6 and put the 6 in the first place and then multiply 2 into 1 is equal to 2 and put it is in the last place of the product for the middle space we should take the sum of the products of 2 into 2 plus 4 3 into 1 equal to 3 then take this product sum 4 plus 3 is equal to 7 then put this 7 in the middle value this is this is the pro product of the two numbers 32 and 21 this method is called multiplication using lines here lines are taken as number numbers here this this is 32 here three lines and two here two lines and other side it is drawn vertically so that in the, this is the four lines of that four and this is the one line of that one and the points are counted in this case here this is divided into three segments 1 2 and 3 this is the first segment the points in this segment are placed in the ones place that is 2 and points in this third segment is placed as the last place we know that in multiplication of two two digit number the maximum digit of in the product side is 4 so here it is 1 2 3 4 12 and give a space in between that two numbers and count this 3 and this point together this 3 and 8 11 and put one here and carry over this one this two, uh, two here and the your yeah, product will be 1 3 1 2 here we are multiplying one three digit number and another two digit number by drawing the figure we are dividing the figure into four segments in the first segment we are counting the points and putting them in the units place and then going to the second segment and counting the points in the second segment and putting them in the next place here is 4 16 20 and 2 over 2 and going to third segment here there is here is 14 points and plus 2 16 1 and going to the fourth segment there are 12 points and 30 and your answer is 13608 this is we are multiplying two three digit number in the figure form in first we are dividing the figure into five segments and counting the point in the first segment to get the first place of the unit unit of the product side and here it is 3 and 
going to the second segment and counting the points there is 14 and one carry on then the third segment there are 18 points and adding this one this will become 19 and one carry on and going to fourth there are 16 plus 4 20 21 20 plus 1 21 and carrying this 2 and in the last there is 8 and it becomes 10 and this is this is your product of 4 3 4 2 3 into 2 4 1 this is called a japanese trick to find squares we need to we need to find the square of 83 First, in the first step, we need to find the square of 8 and 3, which is 64 and uh, 9. In the second step, we multiply the product of these two numbers by 2, which is 48. Now, we need to add these two and we get the answer of this square, which is 6, 8, 8, 9. In the second question, we have 98 square. We need to find the square of 9, which is 81 and the square of 8 which is 64 now we multiply the product of these two numbers by 2 we get 144 now we add these two numbers and we get the square of 98 which is 960 with this trick we can find the uh, square of a three-digit number in which the tens digit is 0 we take the square of 409 the first two digits of the uh, three digit, uh, square of the 409 is 16, which is the square of the first digit, which is 4. The last two digits of the uh, answer will be the square of the last digit of the question, which is 9 square, which is 81. The middle two digits will be twice the product of the first and the last term, which is 2 into 4 into 9, which is 72. And the answer is 1672. Another example is the square of 607. The first two digits of the answer will be the square of the first digit of the question which is 6 and the square is 36. The last two digits of the first answer will be the square of the first the last digit of the uh, question which is 7 and the square is 49. Now the middle two digits will be twice the product of the first and last term which will be 2 into 6 into 7 which is 84. Now we get the square of 607 is equal to 3, 6, Memorizing trigonometric values has always been a nightmare to many of us. Here, we're going to show you a simple trick to memorize the values using your fingers. So for that, take your left hand, let the little finger represent 0 degree, the ring finger represent 30 degree, the middle finger represent 45 degree, the index finger represent 60 degree, and the thumb represent 90 degree. So let's begin by finding out the values of sine. For that, count the number of fingers below, take the square root of that and divide it by 2. Let's see how we can find out the value sine 0. For that, count the number of fingers below the little finger. Below little finger, we don't have any fingers. So by the formula, the value sine 0 is root 0 by 2, that is 0. Now, Let's find out the value of sine 30. The number of fingers below the ring finger is 1. So by the formula, the value of sine 30 is root 1 by 2, that is 1 by 2. Now, let's find out the value of sine 45. The number of fingers below the middle finger is 2. So by the formula, the value of sine 45 is root 2 by 2. By rationalizing, we get 1 by root 2. Now, let's find out the value of sine 60. The number of fingers below index finger is 3, so by the formula, the value of sine 60 is root 3 by 2. Now, let's find out the value of sine 90. The number of fingers below the thumb is 4, so by the formula, the value of sine 90 is root 4 by 2, that is 1. Like sine for course, the only difference is we are going to count the number of finger above instead of counting it below. So first let's find cos 0, here the number of finger above the little finger is 4, then by using the formula cos 0 will be root 4 by 2 that is equal to 1. 
Now let's find cos 30. Above the ring finger there are 3 fingers. So by the formula cos 30 will be root 3 by 2. Now let's find cos 45. So above the middle finger there are 2 fingers. So cos 45 will be root 2 by 2. By rationalization it will be 1 by root 2. Next is cos 60. Above the index finger there is only 1 finger. So cos 60 will be root of 1 by 2 that is equal to 1 by 2. Now let's find cos 90. Above thumb there is no finger. So cos 90 will be root 0 by 2 that we can write it as 0. Tan is very different from sin and cos. For tan we flip our hand. Observe the little finger is 0 degree, ring finger is 30 degree, middle finger is 45 degree, index finger is 60 degree and thumb is 90 degree. Now the formula to find tan is root of fingers above by root of fingers below. So if you want to find tan 0 first count the numbers above the little finger and then below the little finger. We can see that there is no fingers above little finger and there are 4 fingers below little finger. Now the value of tan 0 is equal to root of 0 by root of 4 that is 0. Now let's find tan of 30. We can see that above ring finger there is 1 finger and below there are 3. By formula tan 30 will be root of 1 by root of 3 that is equal to 1 by root 3. Now let's find tan 45. We can see that above and below the middle finger there are 2 fingers each. So tan 45 is equal to root of 2 by root of 2 which is 1. Now we can find tan 60. We can see that above index finger there are 3 fingers and below there is 1 finger. Now tan of 60 will be root of 3 by root of 1 that is root of 3. Now let's find tan of 90. We can see that above thumb there are 4 fingers and below there is no finger. By formula we get root of 4 by root of 0. We know that if the denominator is 0 then fraction is not defined. Therefore tan of 90 comes out to be not defined.